Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant channel. I'm your host, James Harris. This is episode two of uh, the Comic Book Collector's Guide. The first episode, we just set the basics and the expectations on just the basic things you need to know when getting into the hobby of comic book collecting and it's nothing to stress about again it was just the very basics if you um, did not happen to catch that first episode it will be links down at the bottom and I will put uh, a card right here linking to that first episode um, this second episode is totally based on where you might want to buy your comics and how you want to keep up with your comics and it's, it's a lot to unpack in that in that whole scenario so let's start with where would you like to buy your your comics it all depends on and i spoke on this a little bit in the first episode of do you want to go with physical copies do you want to go with digital comics you have those two options do you want to go with um individual single issues do you want to be a uh, trade paperback hardcover collector or again you could do all of all of the above it's no right or wrong answer it's solely based on what your preference is and what's available to you um over you know my time as a comic book collector i've done all of the above it's no again so it's no wrong answer so in that does kind of set up where you would purchase your comics from um a lot of times you have like if you go with digital you have a couple of options number one you have marvel um marvel comics unlimited where it's a subscription based service you could pay for it monthly or you can um pay a yearly subscription amount, uh, fee and you will have access to a, a large library i want to say last check is somewhere around the area of like thirty-three thousand of marvel's comics now with Marvel Comics Unlimited on the digital side, we're just going to start with that um, because that's really still a hot button topic. So that's why I kind of jumped there first. Uh, so you wouldn't technically own them. Again, it's a subscription based service. You do have a huge library. You won't have all the most recent comics. I think they delay them by like uh, six months or so, but you can still get relatively current and you have their whole backlog of comics through the years. So you can, um, I think you can read those on your phone, tablet. Um, and I think they also have a desktop reader. So if you actually want to read comics off the computer, you can do that as well. So you have a lot of different options there. So um, that's something that you might want to have in your comic book collecting um, bag of tricks, if, if we say. So um, for certain stuff that might be hard to find, but you still want to read, you can have, you can subscribe to a service like that. Um, and benefit that that way I'll you probably will be seeing the price somewhere at the bottom somewhere around I don't know what it is off the top of my head I know it used to be $9.99 I think the price came down per month and I think if you do the subscription fee it's either uh, $99 or if the price went down it'll be adjusted but I'll make sure I will list the price so you'll see it so you know specifically what it is um, on this video so don't worry about that as well another another option which these are the two big options out there and this is uh, Comixology Unlimited Comixology is one of the biggest digital online uh, retailers on the internet um, that I'm aware of when it comes to you know selling comics so you can buy comics digitally from Comixology um, you can also, they have a subscription service, which is called Comixology Unlimited, and it's $5.99 a month, I know because I subscribe to the service, $5.99 a month, so with tax, depending on your area, I think for me it comes to around $6.50 with tax a month. Um, all the major publishers are pretty much a part of Comixology Unlimited. Um, I'm going to do a separate video at, one, at some point, add it to this playlist for uh, the comic the comic book collector's guide so that'll be coming in the future where i dig specifically down and i note all the specifics of how comiXology unlimited works but right now roughly all the major like independent publishers are part of comiXology unlimited and all the major studios or publishers are on board except for dc comics um they're the one holdout hopefully at some point and they don't have their own separate subscription service like marvel has so they have no you know outside of you can buy their comics digitally but you can't get it a part of any type of subscription service hopefully 
they'll change that soon but as of right now we we don't have an option outside of buying their comics digitally which you can do directly from their site and or through a site like Comixology. I really like the Comixology interface so I stay you know with them just like um, the Marvel um, the Marvel Unlimited their subscription service you can they have a desktop reader I primarily especially when I'm home I have a 27 inch uh, iMac so I love using the big screen I can you know I'm getting old so with my glasses and all I need the big screen so I primarily read first and foremost off my computer then I have an iPad that I can read off of or if worse comes to worse you can actually even um, read comics they have an app for iPhone Android you can read um, your comics off your phone also um, Comixology is owned by Amazon so if you have a device like a Kindle or you have the Kindle app you can read your Comixology comics or comics you've bought through Amazon through the Kindle ebook store you can all read and they all integrate in which is an awesome thing so you have ac accessibility now the one thing with Comixology Unlimited you don't with the Marvel comics because Marvel joined on the Comixology Unlimited about a year ago so you probably have about half of the backlog of Marvel comics that you have available to you through Comixology Unlimited that you would have through um, Marvel Unlimited if you got that subscription service directly but here's the thing and this is where where I subscribe to Comixology Unlimited not Marvel Unlimited I've done a free trial and I've tried it for a month and I just didn't care for it because I like to read a magnitude of comics outside of Marvel that you're limited to just Marvel Comics, where with Comixology Unlimited, besides the holdout of DC, you have access to Marvel, Image, uh, Boom Studios, uh, the major the major publishers. Like I said, ex ex uh, you know, excluding one major one, but you still have way more variety than what you would have with Marvel um, Unlimited. Plus, with that. Um, each week, each day, they're adding more and more from not just Marvel, but all the different publishers so that the comics that you have access to is getting bigger and bigger day by day, week by week, month by month. So it's, it's a growing service and it's definitely for six fifty a month. It's well worth it. I can attest to that. And I've been subscribed to um, Comixology Unlimited for past year now if I'm not mistaken it's been just about a year when I signed up I joined back I had tried it on the month trial before and it was okay when Marvel joined I subscribed and pretty much have been subscribed ever since and have loved it and if you're a comic book reader on a budget you can't beat you can't beat this, the price of 650 a month to have access to such a big library of comics um, then you also have online retailers you have things like eBay um, you have um, sites in stocktrades.com, they're a great resource. Um, DCBService.com, big online retailer. Um, you have um, Amazon themselves. Amazon, and this is the great thing about Amazon, is that you can get, they have the Kindle ebook store, plus they have Comixology, which if you go to Comixology.com, it'll tell you this is an Amazon company. They don't try to hide that fact at all. But you can buy physical comics through Amazon because they're a retailer then you can buy comics through their Kindle ebook store or go through Comixology so you have a lot of different options so no matter what side of the scale that you fall on at any given point in time you can pretty much go to Amazon and get what you need which is great um, I'm going to do separate videos and I just want to make this clear now this is not this is not sponsored I've been a longtime customer of in stock trades and DCV service or discount comic book service. Um, they also are one of my sponsors for my audio podcast. If you haven't checked it out, it is um, Comic Book Savant. You can find that on iTunes. All the links are down in the uh, video description box below to all to, to the actual podcast. Um, but I love their service. Again, hashtag not sponsored. Um, but I'm going to be doing. Um, in cooperation with them, I'm actually going to be doing some detailed videos about um, the InStockTrades.com service as well as a discount comic book service in more detail. Those videos are going to be coming um, and I'm going to show you what those services are about. InStock Trades is like Amazon, they, but if by, of course by the name, InStock Trades specializes trade paperbacks, um, hardcovers, things like absolute editions 
um, Marvel Masterworks, any kind of bound edition, and hence the name In Stock Trades. Um, when you come with Discount Comic Book Service, it's basically like a local comic book store, but online. You would order your weekly, you know, comics through them. It's a very, um, you save a ton of money. I, I um, discovered them, uh, gosh, about 15 years ago now. It's somewhere around 15 years ago because it was before I even start podcasting. I was listening to a podcast and heard about the service, tried the service, fell in love with it, used it for years. So I pretty much switched to digital only. Um, but I still love their service. I was a customer of theirs for like over 10 years. Um, but a great service. I'm going to go more into detail because it's. Uh, um, you can place orders online, but you kind of place orders in a different way. Brief way to just break it down through for um, discount comic book service. The reason why you can save so much money is because you kind of order like the like you're a comic book store owner. You would order your comic books two months in advance. You pay for them a month in advance, and then you get in a month of their release. Um, again, I'm going to do a detailed video, and I'm going to go through. I'm going to actually go through an order. And then you'll see the end result when I when I get the order. So it's going to be a whole whole series I'm going to do as in addition to to this um, playlist of the comic book collector's guide to kind of give you more uh, options and you can see hands on how these different services work. So they're very varied. Um, but and it's a lot of other smaller retailers. I'm going to speak on what I know because I can speak about it more more confidently because I actually have used the services for a number of years and I know exactly how they work. I've used a ton over my um, 15 or so years buying comics online. I've used a lot of different services. Some I don't even want to talk about because of the experiences I had. But these are some of the top. eBay is a little bit more of... Um, buyer beware if you've ever bought anything off of ebay you can be familiar with that uh, you you know it's kind of buyer beware um you have to do when it comes to something like um ebay you have to do your due diligence and research and know specifically what you want kind of do enough research to see what the going price is because comics are, are a big thing on a secondary market and um you know if you have a specific cover that was a uh, you know a variant cover that they had that people covet you know it can get real pricey if you go somewhere on ebay um and try to shop it out so you have to do your best research to know what you're doing and kind of set your parameters on how much you want to spend going in so it's a little bit more work than what you have with some of the other options when you're looking at buying comics through a service like um, ebay but it can be well worth it you can get some some great deals and I can say this too, because you're looking at me like, you're looking at me right now, I can see, I can feel you. You're looking at me like, how do you know? Um, for most of this time that I, again, past 15 years or so, that I um, was buying comics online, I also ran a eBay store selling comics. I would, I had a, I had a bad habit, I can admit. I used to buy the individual issues, then when the trades came out, I bought the trades, and then when the hardcovers came out, I bought the hardcovers. If an absolute edition or a special edition came out, then I bought that too. How I was able to afford all that was that I would sell, you know, I would sell the floppies for the trades. I would sell the trades for the hardcovers. I would trade the hardcovers, sell the hardcovers for the special editions. Uh, so for most of that time, for at least ooh, about 10 years, maybe eight to 10 years, I ran a very successful um, online eBay store selling comics. So um, I can speak from experience with that. It can be a slippery slope, but if you do your due diligence, you can come out a winner going through somewhere like eBay, getting like sets or a particular run of a series you want. If you do the research and you, and you take the time, a little bit of extra time, you can, that's definitely a viable place to get comics from at a reasonable price as well. Um, now, one other thing I wanna talk about is comic book storage. Um, you have a lot of different options when it comes to that. You have what they call um, long boxes, which are just long cardboard boxes that you can store your comics in. You can have individual dividers, like if you have a particular run all together, you can put them in. Um, 
you know, a lot of people get comic books graded and slabbed and like they're in this hard plastic slab and they get graded. And that's like if you're a comic book seller and you're, you're looking at comic books as an investment. And like I, like I said in the first episode, if you're really into comic books and you're a fan and you're a hobbyist, it's not, you're not doing it for an investment or trying to make money. Or if you're doing, if you're flipping comics, you're doing it to buy more comics, more so than anything else. Um, that's a whole other speculators market that you pay to get these graded, but they come nice and slabbed. Um, and that's a whole nother thing. I don't have any experience with that because I was always just a comic book reader and fan, not so much as a speculator and got into that whole side of it so i'm going to leave that to the professionals you can find that you know you can research that on the internet very easily um now you have your your standard thing because when you normally buy your comics if you go into a local comic shop and that's one thing i left off as a place to buy comic books is that you have local comic book stores you can search on if you're not familiar where uh, a local comic book store is in your area you can always go to you know go to the internet um I can't remember. It's a, it's, a, it's a site. I think my local comic shop or mycomicshop.com. That's like a big directory where you can put in your zip code and you can find what comic book shops are available in your area. Or you could just do like a Google search for local comic book shops, you know, in your city, and you should be able to pull up a list pretty easily on on finding a local comic book shop. It's advantages and disadvantages going to local comic book shops. Um, it's good. I, I'll never say not to support your local comic shop because even when I bought comics online, I would still go to the original comic shop that I would go to um, and still buy a few comics to support. Or if they had, you know, big sales, they would have particular sales at certain times of the year. I would always go in and buy some trades and just to support. It's always good because more and more comic shops are closing um, day by day and it's a part of if you're a fan it's nothing like it's nothing better than going into a comic shop and just looking around and finding something you've been looking for for a long time and picking it up and buying and walking out the store with it it's just a very unique specific experience to the hobby that can't be matched so it's worth if you've never been it's definitely worth checking out uh, so I would in always recommend that first all these other options are coming into you know like myself as i got older with work and different situations it was harder and harder for me to get out to the comic book shop so then online became an option because i wanted to keep up with my comics and through these different services you know something like uh discount comic book service I, could, I got my comic shipped to me weekly so new comics came out on Wednesday when I would come home on Friday they would be waiting on my doorstep and on the weekend I could read my week's comics now I paid a little bit extra for that for that premium but I'll get into that when I do that particular video but I could still read my local comics you know my weekly comics and I didn't have to you know go across town to the comic book shop if it was far away they were just they would be delivered on my doorstep and i could just open up my box and go so it's different advantages and disadvantages to the whole thing and again this is it's no right or wrong answer just what you feel that works best for you in your situation only you know what your situation is and what's going to work best for you and and you pursuing this hobby so again don't feel like you have to feel pressure to do one or another just because i'm talking about it i'm just giving you information that so you can take the information i'm giving you and use it best for you to um to be successful in taking this journey and to collecting comics it's a hobby and it should be fun and i'm trying to give you all the tools in your in your to give you as many tools as possible to help you be as successful as you want to be in this hobby because it's real fun once you get into it um one other thing i want to talk about you got bags you have boards because normal time most of the times when you go into comic book stores you buy issues just issues um they have things that are you know um plastic mylar bags that you can slide your comic in and then you have a board so you can keep the spine you know pristine you keep the comic as pristine as possible um those can cost so those are a, a part of the investment if you're really collecting you want to keep your comic books in a particular uh condition and shape that's a part of something that you want to look into when you're buying your comics bags and boards um through different online services when you order your comics for a minimal fee you know, anywhere, I think like through, um, 
in stock trades or other online retailers it might be anywhere from seven eight cent per comic to ten to fifteen cent depending on the quality of the bag and the board that you when you buy your comics when they're shipped to you they're all going to come in their own individual bags and boards so they're they're in the best condition as possible and you know while they're being shipped to you which is well worth the the few cents that it's going to cost that you don't have to worry about it and probably in the long run it might be a little bit cheaper than having to buy bags and boards in separately and then actually bagging and boarding the comics after you get them they already come to you it's already done um now like i said you have when it comes to storage you have long boxes one thing i want to recommend and I used them till I got rid of all my, my physical comics because I only have a few left in my collection now, just stuff I actually had signed by particular artists or writers, um, are drawer boxes. They're the same thing as long boxes, but they're actually drawers. So where, uh, um, I'm going to put a picture up. You should be seeing it now, here or here, of what a drawer box is. It's a, basically a long box but it has an extra component. It's interlocking like a drawer and it pulls out. They're phenomenal. Uh, this company, I can't remember how long this, this company's been around. Um, I learned about them through a podcast and I actually went to a comic book show for a podcast. And I think it was like their 300 episode and I won um, a whole, I think like 10, of the drawer boxes and those things last. I, I had them until I got rid of my comic collection. They lasted literally for years. Um, they're very high quality cardboard. You you construct them and you know you put them together. They don't come assembled, but they're super sturdy. They're just cardboard like interlocked. It's very intricate putting it together, but if you follow the instructions are easy to follow. You put those things together they are so sturdy. And what makes drawer boxes worth it, they can be a little pricey. I'll, um, ah, here it is. Draw, um, for a pack of five boxes, it's just shy of $54. Um, well worth the investment. Um, and depending on how many comics you have and how tightly you pack a box, you can literally get a couple of hundred comics or a hundred, 150 comics in a drawer box. So, um, to start off, uh, depending on how many comics you might already have in your collection, an order of five, 54 bucks for it is well worth it. And like I said, these drawer boxes will last you. I've moved multiple times and have my, you know, moved the drawer boxes and those things held up. They never gave out on me. Um, again, well worth it. And they even have tabs that you can interlock them. So like you can see online, if you go to the website and I'll have the links down in the description to the drawer boxes websites, you'll see testimonials and you'll see people that have whole rooms and walls where they bought the tabs to interlock them. So you can stack them and have them connected whole walls of drawer boxes. They're, they're again, I can't speak highly enough of the service there. Hashtag not sponsored, but I've used their product. Like I said, it was so cool. When I first heard about them, I was wondering how I can get them. And I, I went to a, a comic book show again. Well, it was a podcast celebration. And like I said, it was their like 300th episode and they had a live recording and I went and they had a raffle. And I literally like won. It was like one of the best things I ever, ever won was, um, I think at the time I was like 10, I won like two orders of them and I put them together. And like I said, they, they lasted me throughout. Um, I didn't have the interlocking things because I didn't have the room to stack them. So I just had them, you know, like straight out and they lasted. They're, they're phenomenal. So they're, there's definitely well worth, um, the investment. I don't think $54 is a lot when you're storing your comic book collection that you spent X amount on It's one of those things. Like when you're getting into the hobby and depending on how serious you want to get with it, it's certain investments you have to take. And that one is one you should definitely take especially after your your collection starts growing you're gonna want something good to put your comic books away in and that's one of the best things but that's all i have for you for this second episode of the comic book collector's guide i hope you guys have enjoyed i hope you like the series so far i have more episodes planned and coming already planning out talking about more aspects of the things you need to know when you know, taking this journey into this uh, hobby. And again, hopefully I've, I've made this um, as easy to follow as possible and entertaining. So again, definitely, if you haven't already, 
subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell notification so you're notified when the next episode will drop. Um, I'm your host, James Harris. Also, it's a playlist. So this is, and I'm going to have some other um, other episodes that I've done on specific topics that are kind of related to comic book collecting. I'm going to add to this playlist. So it'll be this series and what I think is related content on videos I've already released, um, like um, reading list and things of that nature. And I'll be doing some episodes like that as well on um, comics to recommend to you if you're new to comics that you might would want to read. So be on the lookout for all of that. I'll see you next time for another episode of Comic Book Savant and the Comic Book Collector's Guide. You guys take care and happy hunting.